Welcome to the Darcy Wellness Show. My name is Jeff Darcy. I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist at the Darcy Wellness Clinic. And with me today in the studio is Dr. Margot Roman, veterinarian extraordinaire at MASH Animal Clinic in Hopkinton. And we're gonna talk about integrative veterinary herbal medicine. So Margot, tell me a little bit about, you've been practicing 30 years, tell me a little bit about integrative veterinary care. Well, the, the term integrative medicine really is the new word for what we do as holistic veterinarians. So we had holistic medicine and complementary medicine, but integrative is bringing the best of all the modalities together and doing it with the whole animal in the picture. So it's really important to, 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 to look at that whole picture and find the best ways to help the animal get better. So if you think that you need to have surgery on an animal, you have the ability to do surgery, but if you know you can do something with herbs or acupuncture or homeopathy or chiropractic, you've got all these other tools that you can use to help you get your animal healthier. I mean, it, ma it makes a lot of sense that you would want to treat the whole animal rather mm -hmm. than just the disease, which is kind of the premise of kind of holistic medicine in general as mm -hmm. applied to humans or to, to animals. So in your, you've got more in your toolbox basically than a conventional veterinarian who would just be very limited to pharmaceuticals or to surgery, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I always t use the analogy with my clients, you know, if I was gonna build a house and all I had was a hammer and a saw and a bunch of saw blades and I could do every fancy cut, I, I could build a house, but what kind of house would I end up with? Yeah. If I knew how to use all the other tools, a level and a tape measure and all, the, you're gonna build a better, better house and the same thing happens with animals. You're gonna build a better animal health situation where their animal's gonna not get sick again and, and be able to stay healthy. So it's a viable option. If we could just go to our first couple of slides, a viable option to use herbal medicine for animal care. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, and if we're moving through. So the idea of, you know, herbal medicine in, in our world today, that it's not just something that is considered to be uh, alternative. It is something that is uh, used, you, know, you have 80% of, of China, you know, using herbal medicine. You've got 75% uh, uh, of all drugs coming from folk medicine, one in three in North America using complementary medicines. You know, 70% of German doctors prefer to prescribe herbal medicines. Uh, in Japan, 80% of medical doctors have experience with herbal medicine. So this is nothing, you know, this is nothing new, but we've kind of got pigeonholed into just one option or two options, just the pharmaceuticals. So why do you, pref what kind of circumstance do you prefer using herbal medicine over, say, a pharmaceutical? And when do you use pharmaceuticals? Well, if I can get an animal to, to heal with something very natural, that's my first choice because it goes along with what animals are. They're a natural being that would find these herbs on their own, most likely if they were not feeling well, they would, they would scrounge around and look in different places and, and try to innately do something to help themselves. And so if we can use something that has, you know, hundreds and thousands of years of folklore and, and history to help particular problems, and it works on the animals, why not use something that doesn't have side effects? Right. And the, the issue is the side effects can be so bad that it can cause the animal death. So if I can do something that's safe and effective, that's really what I'm trying to do. And how long have you been using herbal medicine? In, in um, my practice? entire career, wow. which is yeah. 32 years. Yeah. You know? So you were in all the early days, it's just starting to broaden now. Yeah, I mean, my parents were always into health food and consciousness and so I, yeah. about that. So I went to veterinary school understanding that these are pieces of, the, of nutrition that we have to look at as part of what makes the body stay healthy. Yeah, and uh, if we could go to our, our next slide, uh, you know, why, why herbal medicine? The idea that originally from, uh, you know, that 20, 121 prescription drugs, human drugs, come from uh, uh, plant species. About 74% came from folk, folklore medicine. So we're standing on the, the shoulders of folklore uh, medicine, just with the drug discoveries that we've already got. There's a couple there, the Pacific U uh, produced taxol compounds from rosy periwinkle, produced the two successful uh, drugs in the world, Vin, Vin Blast and Vin Kristin, and uh, Foxglove uh, producing digitalis. So there is a huge basis for how herbal medicine has produced these drugs. Mm -hmm. But the neg what are some of the negative side effects of using this synthetic 
simple molecule of a pharmaceutical versus a complex well, molecule? It, well, I mean, when you use a plant, you're using the whole food of the plant and you're using the phytonutrients, you're using the essential oils, you're using all the components that are made to work with the body in a full body balance. Yeah. Yeah. So allowing the food substance that could be herbal work with the, the, all the organ systems the way it's supposed to and not just pick out one piece that may not have all the components that the body needs to actually make the herb work in, in, with other herbs and other plants and right. other parts of the body. Because there's very interesting stories of uh, herbal formulas that have been you know, tried and, and tested mm -hmm. over hundreds of years, maybe having eight ingredients. And yet, when you take one of those ingredients out, that formula is nowhere near as effective. As effective. There's a synergy between all eight and all those compounds. Let's say they produce those eight herbs might be producing 100 compounds in each. Instead of being 800 compounds, the belief is there's a synergy and it produces new compounds, maybe 1,000 compounds as the total uh, uh, effectiveness as, as a formula. So the idea of bringing herbs into formulas is a very strong tradition in, in, in most continents around the world, makes it so much more effective. So are there certain areas that you, uh, you, that, you know, in your practice uh, would be associated to deficiency in the immune process of animals? I mean, well, I mean, it, it, sadly, um, the immune complex of animals has, has been weakened over generations and generations of, of, of dogs and cats, and that's what I work on. And the cancer rate in animals has gone up and up to the point where 46 to 47 percent of dogs are getting cancer and 39 percent of cats are getting cancer. And that is crazy. It's absolutely crazy because we didn't have that when I started so how practicing. How was it 30, 30 years, years ago when you started? 30 years ago, it was, you saw cancer, but it was really in older dogs that were getting really old and they started to have growths and then they started to have internal cancers. To see a young dog with cancer was a rarity. I yeah, mean, it really yeah. was. And it was specific breeds. It was really boxers. That was it. Boxers got cancer. And that was sort of, in veterinary school, you used to talk, go through breeds and they'd say, boxers, cancer. And all the other breeds didn't have cancer as much or anywhere near. Now, boxers are probably the norm, you know, like average. And the golden retriever, 64%, 64% wow. are getting cancer. Yeah. And that's, that's just there's something we're doing something so wrong. Yeah. If we so could go wrong. to our, our next slide, uh, just to move through these slides mm. uh, a little quickly. Actually, that's uh, and the next one. That's Margot's bio. Uh, herbal medicine, you know, supplement conventional approaches, minimize side effects, improve treatment options, and then move along to our next one. And here's some interesting figures. There's 68 million dogs in the U.S. and 73 million cats in the U.S. So that's an you know so. That's, that's a figure that's increased enormously. If we could move on to our next one, uh, that, you know, herbal medicine's a, a, a gentle, natural, non-toxic therapeutic approach. Uh, and the next one. So the history, just to go over the history, then we'll come back to some of the issues I want to mm. move to, to the immune system. The, the history, it, it, over 3,000 years of uh, history of treating, actually primarily in Chinese medicine, veterinary, Herbs were used to treat the emperor's horses. If we could move on to the next one, where they've been treating horses as well as humans. And uh, there's, there's the figures that you quoted, 47%. Uh, cats and dogs, uh, you were more accurate on the, uh, on the cats. The surgery and chemotherapy are now becoming expensive options for many owners. You know, uh, probably 600 to 7,000 on the cheap side for the Northeast, I imagine, right? Mm -hmm. For the treatment of chemotherapy. Yeah, I mean, it, it is really expensive. And what happens is people don't, are scared and they don't know which way to turn to. And the only options that they're given is to go for chemo, radiation, yeah. or surgery. Yeah. And there's no guarantees with that at all. And there's a lot of suffering that goes on with those particular procedures. So it's... It, it, Can you think you of know, a case history just to... To, to um, walk us through what a, a kind of a typical process might look like leading to chemotherapy, chemotherapy. or radiation? Well, I mean, what happens is an animal, I, I, I often get animals that come in after they've gone through that route and they come to me at that point. I, it's nicer if I can get them before they've had all the so trauma So what would that done. look like in a conventional path? Um, in a conventional path, an animal would come in and let's say, for instance, it, it you know, has, a, has a growth on it and the growth would be biopsied and fine needle biopsies and lab work and then they would 
recommend that the animal get more extensive diagnostics and ultrasounds and chest films and possibly bone marrows and so you're starting to go this what whole kind of cost, route. What, what kind of ballpark um, cost it's, would that it be? can be expensive. It can yeah. be six, seven thousand yeah. dollars. I have one client who spent over a hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. Wow. And from cancer and treatments and all these things and it and so you know wonder, that's not no normal. That's not that's not what people can afford to do. Yeah. And you know you love your animal, but you also most people can't afford there that, and the insurance yeah. companies are not going to pay that. The help the pet insurance companies yeah. will not go that high anyway. So that's very very unusual to yeah. do that. But I think that 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 it's um, important that people you know keep it in perspective and say how can I keep this animal's immune system right. healthy from the get go? So how can I get can, this can stu this animal to stop? Um, having the problems that they have because each time they have a problem and you suppress it you're not curing it you're just suppressing it with drugs and antibiotics and steroids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and if you've got an orthopedic problem going on suppressing it with non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and drugs is not correcting the problem you can yeah. correct it chiropractically or with acupuncture yeah. but don't keep just masking it and pushing it down under the carpet because it's going to come up and bite you again yeah, yeah. You know, so you really want to help the animal heal, not just to stop, not have the symptom. Right. If we could go to our, our next slide. Uh, this slide shows uh, the immune suppression. So there's a, a with immune suppression, you know, there's a, a quote here, because animals with autoimmune thyroid disease have generalized uh, metabolic imbalance and often have associated immune dysfunction, it is advisable to minimize their exposures to unnecessary drugs, chemicals, toxins, and to optimize their nutritional status with healthy, balanced diets. Avoid or minimize toxic exposures, i.e. pesticides uh, on their pets, their surroundings, chemical fertilizer, radiation, high tension power lines, booster vaccinations, preventative chemicals for heartworm, fleas, ticks, and drugs known to exacerbate immunological disorders. So uh, there's a lot there uh, about what has increased in the last 30 years, I imagine, the idea of the toxicity of drugs. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we know that, that there's been over 80,000 plus drugs, uh, plus chemicals yeah. that have been in, added to our environment in the last 50 years. And the pesticides that we use on our animals, we make them become no pest strips and they walk around 24 seven with drugs, with, with a chemical that kills ticks and fleas and, and lice and everything else. And it can't be healthy. It can't be healthy for the, a, this small cat to be walking around like that, or this right. Let alone little a kid dog. picking up the small cat. Exactly, or and you sleeping. spot it on your animal, and it migrates all over. And then you, your child comes and hugs that animal, yeah. and then, again, it's all over your child. It's all over your house. And the companies have never done testing on people long term to find out what that is. But the point is that these animals are a getting exposed to these toxins be getting exposed to more toxins in their food chain because the food quality that we're giving them is inferior. And then they, on top of it, they, they get vaccinated so many times that they don't need those vaccines. And that also is, is changing the, the, the epigenetics of the, of, the, of the body and causing them to get If weaker. we could go to our, our next slide. So the, the idea then that they're exposed to so many different routes as well, to so many chemicals that that suppresses the immune system. And it, uh, you know, vaccinations in, in viral disease, that viral disease and recent vaccination with single or combina uh, combination of modified live virus vaccines, especially those containing distemper virus, adenovirus one or two, and paravirus uh, are increasingly recognized as contributors to immune mediated blood disease, bone marrow failure, organ dysfunction, Potent uh, adjunctive killer vaccines like those for rabies virus can also trigger immediate and delayed adverse vaccine reactions. So can you talk a little bit about sensible vaccination versus uh, you know, unreasonable vaccination? The, the vaccination issue is a very big issue. As veterinarians, we, are, we look at these diseases that we, we learn about in infectious diseases like distemper and parvo and panleukopenia, and they're really bad diseases, yeah. and you don't want your pet to get it. But just because you give a vaccine doesn't mean you need to give the vaccine every year. The immune system remembers this and it doesn't need to be vaccinated every year. 
but veterinarians feel that that's part of why people come into their practices to get these vaccines and they may not come in unless they get the vaccines. So over and over again, the immune system is being challenged by these vaccines. And I always make the analogy, if your body already knows how to respond to it and you keep telling it, do it again, and you're going, but I already know, and then just do it again, I don't yeah. care. Well, what happens is you develop autoimmune problems because the immune system says, I already have antibodies for this. Why are you challenging me every year for this? And so when you see these animals that have been over vaccinated again and again and again, and I, when I take my medical history, I write down all the vaccines. Sometimes it's 65, 70 vaccinations wow. in a time that my client's pets would have gotten five. Yeah. And they've got 65. Yeah. Would that make the animal healthier to have 65 vet, vet vaccinations? I don't think so. I don't think that's healthy. I think it's... So all of these are, all of these actions are really hurting the immune system. The immune animal. system is being bombarded with, with toxins, the uh, uh, aluminum hydroxide, the mercury. There's a lot of chemicals that are in these vaccines and you're injecting that same volume of vaccine that you give to a cat to a 150 pound, you know, w Irish wolfhound. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, this, it's very, very odd. So all, it, what, Tell us a little bit about, so the animals are assaulted with all of these chemicals, mm -hmm. you know, both household, both medicine, you know, ticks and fleas and vaccinations. The immune system gets compromised. How does that show up? What kind of, what kind of problems can come from, obviously cancer or autoimmune? Can yeah. you just kind of flesh that out a little? Well, I think the animals are, are chronically ill. They're just not healthy. So you look at these animals and they, they so never are good. you can't put your finger good. on one diagnosis. Some, some animals, they just never thrive. Yeah. I mean, they never, they're always at the veterinarians. They're always sick. The people are paying, spending a lot of money taking care of these animals. And what, what happens is when you switch them over and you give them a natural diet, you get, reduce their vaccines, you stop giving them drugs and you start giving them nutritional herbal support, nutrition, nutraceuticals that support the, the gut health and the immune system, the animals thrive and then they, they flourish and the people don't need to come into the veterinary clinic, which may be part of the reason why we, <laughs> you know, they, they need to get the vaccine so they come into the veterinary clinic more yeah, often. Yeah. But I think what people are getting a lot smarter now and they want this for their own health. They want this for their family's health right. and, they, and their dog is part of their family. I saw a figure the other day, it said that uh, 20 million pet owners were taking supplements for themselves. So it doesn't seem like it's gonna take very long for them to start to make that rational connection to, mm -hmm. well, if I'm doing it for my own health, for my own nutrition, then maybe I should be doing it for my animal's nutrition. And so the idea then that they have all these exposures, mm -hmm. it, it's a chronic picture that the animal comes in with. Mm -hmm. So it's, you, it, are there diagnoses that you can put your finger on or is it just general chronic disease? It, both, I mean, you have animals that come in with a cancer, which to me is a collapse of the immune system because yeah. it can't protect itself from a, a, a cell that wants to multiply. So it can't say, no, you can't do that and start to protect itself. So cancer is autoimmune. It's just the immune system doesn't yeah. recognize it. But they, they come in with chronic skin problems, chronic ear problems, chronic bladder issues, and they get one drug after the next, and they keep getting another drug, another antibiotic, another steroid, another this, another that. And they, they never really solve it. They just keep giving you something to, to get them through this episode, and then they have something that's not related, but it's really related. They get another, they get an ear infection, or they yeah. get another bladder infection, and they get a toe infection, and it's, but they're just chasing the, the weakness around the body. Yeah, so can you think of one case history where the, uh, the symptoms showed it looked like they were heading towards cancer, or they had been diagnosed with cancer, and you intervened with, with some herbal? Yeah, I mean, know, it, either mushrooms it, it's, or hoxie. Yeah, or. I mean, it, it's frustrating. And I, I always feel like a lot of the cancer cases I get, I don't always stop the cancer and remove the cancer. Yeah. I get the immune system strong enough so the animal lives with the cancer and the healthy, the organs that were healthy stay healthy and protect the animals so that they can keep living a life out and keep going, extending year after year after year. And so I've had, I've had you know, a case that was diagnosed of abdomen, abdominal tumors and they didn't do biopsies, but the dog was having pancreatitis and the owner said, you know, I, I, they, they took it to the, the, the veterinary school and they said, well, you know, it's time for the, it, it's, it's very extensive, it's gonna be very expensive, you should put your animal to sleep yeah. if you can't afford to do this. And we did acupuncture and herbs and the dog lived another seven years. Wow. 
and it had tumors in its abdomen the whole time. What kind know? of herbal medicine would you use? Um, I was using a combination, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember because this is now, the dog passed away like three years ago, um, but this went seven years and we had him on digestive enzymes and probiotics. Um, we had glanulars to, to help the immune system. Um, we did use so hoxie. Kind of a multi-dimensional multi with, yeah. with, with herbs, yeah. with nutrition. And to me, nutrition is my core. Yeah. That's my whole basis of how do I get the immune system to work. And if I get the body absorbing things, which is 70% of the immune, immune system comes from your gut. Yeah. And if you get that gut really functioning, then the body can pull the nutrients out of the food if you're using quality food, live food, whole foods, raw foods, things that animals would have acquired if they could do this themselves. Right, right. So if we could move through uh, our next couple of slides uh, quite quickly, please. Uh, so, oh, that's a good one. This suggested uh, cancer protocol, uh, you know, uh, one that, that we, we have used is the Hoxie formula is a, a deep cleansing anti-tumor. This is a collection of herbs that has been used uh, originally from animals over 100 years ago and has kind of got a resurgence going in the holistic veterinary community at the moment uh, with an addition of uh, bone set to Hoxy for osteosarcoma and then usually alongside an immune building formula like uh, mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms such as reishi, shiitake, maitake that have shown anti-tumor anti, uh, capability as well as immune building capability. And they, you, know, it's, you can alternate, rather than send the same message in over a long period of time for months and months, you can alternate some of those formulas. So Hoxy with Petsiac, uh, medicinal mushrooms with the immune building formula, Astragalus and Ligustrum. So these are kind of protocols of how to use uh, herbal formulas in different uh, uh, cases of, of cancer. And, um, generally you know always supporting the food with uh, uh, greens power greens and uh, broccoli sprouts broccoli sprouts stimulate phase two uh, liver enzymes that help to break down uh, cancer cells so yeah we go through uh, a little bit more on this side thank you so um, this one is showing about uh, the form one of the formulas that we've used i believe you you've used uh, also uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you would use a medicinal mushroom uh, to support the immune system? There's a lot of research, for instance, of those three mushrooms. Mm -hmm. In Japan right now, there are four of the top cancer drugs, four of the top 10 cancer drugs are extracts from maitake, shiitake, and reishi. Mm -hmm. So the Japanese have been using medicinal mushrooms for cancer for thousands of years, and even now the, the medical system is still using it. And also in, in China too, there, there's a, in China there's a, a school of treatment called Fujin therapy, which is herbal formulas that are studied for cancer. And one of the top Fujin therapies is uh, maitake, shiitake, and reishi, the mm. power mushrooms. Mm. So they help to work building the immune system over time, but they're also major anti-tumor, antiogenesis kind of capabilities to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so in your own practice, can you think of a time when you've used medicinal mushrooms? I, I use it I all the time. remember on your horse too, you told me a story Yeah, no, I, I, um, I use mushrooms for m most of my cancer cases. Yeah. Um, you know, with my own horse personally, he was on actually mushrooms for, oh, I want to say three years, four years, uh, and he had, he had been, he had cancer for like eight years and, and was told that he was dying and couldn't survive anymore and he lived two and a half more years jumping wow. in horse show and wow. was put to sleep when he was 28. And the quality of life was? Quality of life was great. Right, I mean, he, right. you know, the time that he had the pain in the eye, that was negative, but it, and once the eye was removed, he rallied and was, went for two and a half more years and was, was great. And yeah. so, but the, the, so the, the combination really of mushrooms and, and uh, you know, he was on a formula similar to Hoxie, but a little bit broader than that yeah. uh, that I had him on and um, he had a high omega-3-6 fatty yeah. acids and a lot of other nutri nutri you know, nutritional stuff yeah. for him. Somebody so. should get the <laughs> I set my No, that's all right. But just going to, just going to the idea of uh, the treatment of, you know, so you, you treat horses, uh -huh. all kinds of animals in your clinic. Uh -huh. Dogs, well, well I don't do a lot of horses. I just really do my own horse. Yeah. and. Yeah. Or did my own horse, but he is, he's passed. And but mostly it's dogs and cats, yeah. and some ferrets, some birds, 
um, just small animals and it they but the, sadly it's 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 busy with cancer cases and yeah. immune related so cases. So with autoimmune problems, I mean, how does that link into say thyroid conditions? Well, thyroid is an autoimmune aspect of the thyroid gland, and hyperthyroidism in cats is 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 also very high. Yeah. Um, and hypothyroidism in dogs is very high. And we you start actually have seeing, on, on screen right okay. now the uh, hypothyroid. So there are herbs that are very supportive of the thyroid, especially when it's under functioning. You know, herbs like uh, Siberian ginseng, kelp, especially for its natural iodine uptake, astragalus root, alfalfa, fennel seed, garlic. These herbs are tremendously supportive of uh, and mainly in dogs, right? The idea of uh, that dogs have a hypothyroid conditions yes, that they're yeah, under functioning. Very, it's very rare to find a so cat. So some indications of, of a hypothyroid in, in the clinic um, that you generally see. You know, see. In, the, the typical dog will come in and be slightly overweight, yeah. um, have a, a hair coat that's a little bit rough, um, a little bit of dry, flaky skin, and their heart rate is typically slow. Yeah. And it, But it can go into more... I've had dogs that have not had any of those situations uh -huh. but have been hypothyroid and it was all behavioral. Yeah. So um, it was to have the behavior piece yeah. uh, be an issue because if an animal, that, that can affect it, then they become aggressive, right. they become difficult. Um, and once you get the thyroid regulated, then it, they seem to, to rally around, get their coat back, and they get their mood back. So you've had good good success yes, with hypothyroid Yes, yeah, definitely. Condition. And, yeah. you know, we I usually try to, I have different ways of doing it. Some yeah. is all natural yeah. with natural thyroid supplement, and some are with So how far do you um, take it before thyroid. you have to start to use pharmaceuticals? Um, I'll start, I always, what I'll do is the pharmaceuticals work very yeah. quickly, and, and they are easy for people to use, and especially in hyperthyroid, that in cats, that that works the best for me at yeah. this point. I supplement with the herbs so I can reduce the amount I of see. medication that I so use. So you reduce so the burden on, on, on the body of the exactly. pharmaceutical. Exactly. So I typically still put them on thyroid support, whether it be natural thyroid support yeah. or, um, or and glandulars, and then put them on the herbal as well. So I do both. Uh -huh. So I can get the the get the whole the food aspect in there, right? But also um, get the animal. And function. what kind of success do you have with hypothyroidism? Hi hyper. Hypo. Hypo. Hypothyroidism. You get pretty good success yeah. with that one. That's yeah. not that is that's that's not. I wish a, that, you know that was the hardest thing to regulate. Is that? But that's the hypothyroid yeah. is usually pretty pretty good. If we could go to our our next formula uh, that we have on on a, a slide. Uh, so hyper for cats. They're very Indications are very mm -hmm. hot, fast food transit time, hyper. In yeah, general. I mean, you have the typical cat that is constantly jumping on the counters wanting something to eat. Yeah. And they just ate. So they, they're constantly hungry, they're thin, they're, they whine, they cry, they can also have a hard time swallowing. You'll see them sort of trying to swallow hard yeah. uh, because the, their thyroid glands are, are enlarged and they're putting some pressure on their, on their throat. Um, and it usually happens in cats after 10 and a half, 11 years of age. Um, I don't usually see younger cats that are hyperthyroid, but your thyroids are your most vulnerable organ in your body. And if the vaccines or, or something is hurting the thyroid, you're gonna, that, that organ system is, right. is vulnerable. And what kind of success have you had? Because you know, I know that, for instance, vervain and bugleweed are two ingredients that block the thyroid really very successfully while, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in terms of Chinese medicine, I know that the yin nourishing herbs mm -hmm. are great balancers of the thyroid. So if you're blocking the hyper uh, thyroid output while you're nourishing and bringing it back into, into a balance, and oftentimes you get great results. Uh, have you had good results in well, your Well, I, I want to say with, hyper with the, 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 the thyroid um, herbs for hyperthyroid, I get reduction of my medication, yeah. I, I wish I could say I could get them to heal and not have a problem, yeah. but I, I don't. I usually have to still rely on some conventional uh, thyroid medication. Okay, Margot Roman, veterinary, veterinarian extraordinaire at Hopkinton, uh, the in Hopkinton Mash Animal Clinic. I want to say thank you very much for coming oh, on welcome. with me today. You're welcome. My name is Jeff Darcy. I want to thank you very much for for joining us on the Darcy Wanna Show, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you.